Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we will discuss section 1031 specifically when liability is involved in the transaction. So before we start the session, I want to make sure you understand what section 1031 is. Please go to the prior session, actually prior two sessions. In one of them, I explained section 1031, like-kind exchanges in details. Then I work an example, a comprehensive example. In this session, we would look at liability involved. In a non-taxable exchange transaction, a liability assumed by the taxpayer is treated as a boot given. What does that mean? Simply put, if you sell an asset, let's assume you're selling your home. And that's just, I'm a lousy drawer, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to draw a home here, like a two-year-old drawing a home. And let's assume the selling price is $300,000. That house comes with a mortgage. Simply put, the bank has a mortgage against this house, and let's assume the mortgage is for $100,000. There's a $100,000 mortgage attached to that house. You agreed to buy my house. So when you buy the house, guess what? The mortgage comes with it. So how much did you really pay for the house? Well, you technically paid $400,000. Why? Well, you paid me cash, $300,000, and you took over my liability. I'm no longer have to pay 100,000. It is as if you gave me 100,000. It's as if you gave me 100,000. I went to the bank and I paid the bank off. That did not happen. All what happened is you took over my mortgage. It's the same thing. I'm no longer responsible for that 100,000. Well, that 100,000, that's liability assumed by you is a boot to me. So it's technically as if you paid me a boot in terms of cash. So when someone assume a liability and that's basically, that's the basic idea. Now let's keep going. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. If the other party assumes the taxpayers that the liability in this case represent a boot received by the taxpayer. Why is this important? Because in a section 1031 exchange, when boot is involved, it might trigger a gain. As previously mentioned, when received by the taxpayer, the boot triggers a gain recognition to the extent of the amount of the boot. Let's take a look at this example. Andy and Nick exchange office building. The property given by Andy had an adjusted basis of 80 and a fair value of 95. Well, if it's 95 minus 80, we have a realized gain of 15,000 so far for Andy. In addition, it was subject to a liability of 12,500. Well, we have a liability of 12.K on this building. That was transferred to Nick. So Nick took over this liability as if Nick paid you an additional 12,500. On the other hand, the property given by Nick has an adjusted base, had an adjusted basis of 75, fair value of 82,500. Now we're looking at Nick minus 82,500 minus 75. So Nick had a realized gain of 7,500. Now determine the amount of gain and loss realized and recognized. Well, we already computed the realized for both party. And Andy, would have a recognized gain. Why? Because Nick took over the mortgage, 12,500, there's a boot, and the gain recognized is the lesser of the boot or realized gain, the boot is lower. Okay, let's take a look at it. The, the amount realized by Andy is 15,000, the gain realized by Andy. In addition, the liability transferred to Nick is considered a boot received by Andy. And I told you, we'd, we'd choose the lesser of 15 and 12,000. Now, Let's take a look at Andy's situ uh, Nick's situation. Nick realized gain is 7,500, computed as the difference between 82,500 and 75. Nick did not receive any boot, therefore should not recognize any gain. It's as simple as that. 
determine Andy's and Nick basis and the properties they received. Well, Andy's basis and the and the received property equal to the fair value of the property, which is eighty-two thousand five hundred, minus the amount of the third gain. Well, remember we had realized gain of fifteen thousand, of which twelve thousand five hundred was recognized. Therefore, the deferred or the non-taxable portion is 12,500. Therefore, we'll take the fair value of the asset received minus 12,500, which will give us a basis of 80,000. We could also compute this using the code approach, starting with the adjusted basis of the property given up, the adjusted basis for the property for Andy is 80,000, minus the fair value of the boot received because that boot received is taxable. Well, that's it, it's taxable. So it's gonna bring us to 12,500, plus the gain recognized, which is, again, the gain recognized on the boot, which is gonna give us also 80,000. So 80,000, 80,000, this is the code approach. Now let's take a look at Nick. As far as Nick, the, the basis equal to the amount of the fair value of the asset received, 80, 80 95,000 and the total amount of gain realized we have to do what not realized realized but not recognized which is 7,500 so the fair value of the asset received is 95 minus the deferred gain we deferred the full 7,500 which will give Nick a basis of 87,500 we can do the same thing with the Code approach, adjusted basis of the property given up by Nick is 75. The adjusted basis of the boot given, and he gave a boot of 12,500. Well, that's equal to 87,500, which is the same thing as the fair value method. Now, let's take a look at, at, at another example. Tom and Jill exchanged their investment properties in accordance with the following terms. Tom transferred a parcel of land with an adjusted basis of 103 fair value of 140. Again, the difference between those is a realized gain for Tom. Tom's land is subject to a mortgage of 20,000 that will be assumed by Jill. So Tom has a mortgage, will be assumed by Jill. Jill transfer a property with an adjusted basis of 91 and a fair value of 130. Again, the difference between those two will be the realized gain for Jill. The property is also subject to 10,000, which will be assumed by Tom. So notice they both have mortgage on their property and they're they're taking over each other's mortgage okay determine the amount of gain realized and recognized by tom and jill let's start with the realized the amount of gain realized by tom is 37 which is the difference between 140 and 103 the amount realized by jill equal to 39,000, which is 130 minus 91 already kind of covered this now in this question we have to be careful both both parties are assuming the liabilities on each other's behalf. So what do we have to do? We have to net them out and see who's assuming more liabilities. So think of it this way. Think of it this way. First, Tom has a land that's subject to a $20,000 mortgage and Jill has a land that's subject to a $10,000 mortgage. So simply put, Jill is paying off $20,000. Jill paying, let me just write it down. Think of it this way, Jill is paying 20,000 and Tom paying 10,000. What do we have to do? We have to net them out. And when we net them out, we find out that Jill paid an additional 10,000. So really Jill, that's really paying the boot and Tom is receiving the boot, okay? Because we have to net them out. The party receiving the boot would recognize a gain for the lesser of the gain and uh, the gain realized or the boot received. So already determined that Tom will end up with the boot of 10,000. Now, given that the liability assumed by Jill equal to 20,000 while the liability assumed by Tom equal to 10, Tom is considered to have a boot of 10,000 because he end up with more assets. Under those circumstances, Tom would recognize a gain of 10 because the realized the realized gain for Tom is the realized gain is 37. So of that 37, what's going to happen? 10 will be taxable now and 27 will be deferred or non-taxable for now, deferred. And Jill will recognize no gain. Why? Because overall, although 
Tom took over 10,000, but she took over 20,000. Therefore, it's we net them out. Okay. Determine the basis of Tom and Jill and the properties they received from the exchange. Tom's basis equal to the fair value of the property received, which is 130, minus any deferred gain. How much gain did we defer? 39,000, uh, 27,000 of gain, as I told you, because 10,000 was taxable. The total gain was 37. As a result, the basis is 103. Jill's basis is the fair market value of the asset received, of the property received, 140, minus any deferred gain. She deferred 39,000. None of her gains were taxable. Therefore, her basis is 101. One more topic we need to discuss, section 1031, and that's time requirements. Okay, Does the transaction have to happen simultaneously? Not at all. The taxpayer has 45 days after giving up his property to identify a like-kind replacement. So you have 45 days to identify. Say, I found this property. This property is a suitable property as a replacement. Okay, Then the identified property must be received by the taxpayer within the earlier of 180 days after the taxpayer transferred his old property. So from the date you transferred your property, you have 180 days to get the new one, or the due date, the one that comes earlier, the due date include an extension of the income tax return covering the year in which the transfer occurred, or before the due date, the earlier of these two. We would look at an example. Let's assume Ray owns a commercial building in the, in the center of the city. He would like to expand his business and interested in, in buying his neighbor's garage to use as a storage for some inventory. And believe it or not, my friend, going through the same transaction, his neighbor wants to buy his home to expand his business. So it happens, that's a, that's a real example. His neighbor agrees to sell the garage that had an adjustment of 20,000 and a fair value of 85,000. Provided that Ray can buy him a like-kind replacement property for the same value. So the neighbor said, okay, I'm willing to sell you, but you have to find me, I, I, don't, I don't want the money, find me another property and I will you know, close the deal. The deal was made and the garage was transferred on August 15th. So it appears that they that they that they that Ray secured another property for him. By the end of August, Jad, Ray's neighbor, identified a replacement property of eighty five thousand. So we did replace we did identify within forty five days. We want, to, we want to make sure we close the deal now and inform Ray that he could acquire it. The acquisition was completed October 12th and the property was transferred November 1st. So you have from August till November 1st. I would say this is one less than 180 days. Does this exchange qualify for the like-kind exchange treatment? And the answer is yes. Jay identified the replacement property less than 45 days following the transfer of the original property. In addition, the replacement property was transferred within 180 days following the transfer of the original garage, which is way earlier than the due date of the income tax return. So we are in good shape. As a result, what would happen is this. Jad would realize a gain of 65, which none of it will be taxable. It will be deferred. What should you do now? As a CPA candidate, enrolled agent, or a student, go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional resources, multiple choice, true, false exercises that's going to help you do better. Prepare for your exams or for your classes. This is an important topic, Section 1031, like-kind exchanges, the third gains, the third losses. Don't walk into the exam without being comfortable with this topic. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.